Assalamu alaikum. My name is Fatma Amjad and I am from the Department of Electronics Engineering of University of Engineering and Technology, Tetsla, Pakistan. And I am also a member of Syndicate of Embedded and Electronic Design. Today I am here to talk about my research study that is detection of dilated cardiomyopathy using pulse plus seismographic signal analysis. The main contents of this presentation includes the introduction of the background of the study. The next thing that I will be talking about are the techniques, materials and methods used to achieve the most optimal result for this research and at the end I will be concluding this presentation. For the introduction, the first thing that I will be explaining is DCM. Next I will be talking about the term PUBG and after that I will be telling you the motivations and literature surveys performed in light of this research project. Now what is DCM? DCM stands for dilated cardiomyopathy, which is a self-explanatory term in itself. Since the words cardio means heart and myo means muscle, therefore DCM directly translates to dilation of heart muscles, which is a type of cardiovascular disease that causes difficulties in creating a proper pressure for the pumping of blood to the body, which can ultimately lead to heart failures or heart attack. The demographics show that 1 in 2500 people are, is affected by this cardiovascular disease which depicts that this disease is very common globally. The only solution for the severe cases of this cardiovascular disease is heart transplant which is a quite expensive process. The sensor technologies that are used for the detection of dilated cardiomyopathy include PPG, PCG, ECG, MRI, angiography and PUBG. Uh, and PUBG is the technique uh, upon which our whole study uh, revolves around. PUBG stands for Pulse Plethysmography, which is a technique used for the detection of heart impulses based on volumetric changes. Another technique used for heartbeat or impulse detection is PPG or Photoplethysmography, but there is a clear difference between the two. Since PPG or Photoplethysmography is based on photonic, symbols, whereas, uh, photonic signals, whereas Pulse Plethysmography is based upon blood volume changes. And the images show the signals that are extracted after applying the foot pulse plethysmography sensor to a normal patient or a normal person or the signal of a patient suffering from dilated cardiomyopathy. DCM is one of the leading causes of deaths around the world. And its detection using pulse plethysmography, which is a painless data acquisition technology, can be revolutionary since it can aid in early disease detection and treatment. And lastly, there is not much work done on the detection of dilated cardiomyopathy using pulse plethysmographic sensor. These points ultimately form the motivational basis of this project. An extensive literature survey was performed that revolved around the detection of heart diseases using various techniques. Some of the papers closely related of this study are shown in this slide. As you can see, that not much work done is on uh, not not much work is done on the detection of dilated cardiomyopathy. And the papers that are already present are uh, based upon detection of cardiomyopathies or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a type of cardiomyopathy. Now, jumping on to the materials and methods. The main steps taken in this project include first the acquisition of data since there was no available online data sets for pulse plethysmographic based data signals or DCM signals. Next comes the pre-processing of acquired signals after that comes feature extraction and lastly classification. The data set was acquired using a combination of PTN 104 and NIMI DAC. The signals were acquired through the index fingers of the right hand of the subjects and the data was collected from various hospitals in the areas of Islamabad, Rawalpindi and Wagan. And the timestamp for the signals was 5 seconds per subject and the sampling frequency was set to be 1000 Hz. These images show the data acquisition setup. This is the PTN 104 sensor and this is the NMI DAC. After acquiring the raw signals visually, it can be seen that there are some sort of noises present in the form of power line interface in the signals. These power line interfaces are necessary to be removed and for that a technique called discrete wavelet transform was used. The mother wavelet selected for discrete wavelet transform was Dobichis 5 or DB5 and the decomposition was carried up to 5 levels. The images show a comparison of noisy and clean signals of a normal person and a person suffering from dilated cardiomyopathy. Before classifying the signals, it is important to perform feature extraction and the features giving the best results are shown in this slide that are root mean square, peak to peak and kurtosis. And lastly, 
the classification was carried out upon the chosen features or the feature set that was developed comprising of the three features mentioned before the classification select the classification or the classifier selected for this study is support vector machines which is a type of supervised machine learning and that separates data by developing hyperplanes comprising of soft or harsh margins depending upon the kernel selected and for this study the kernel selected was gaussian kernel and the validation was carried out upon 10 fold cross validation now what were the results achieved after performing all these steps the results show that there were a number of feature sets and the best feature set giving the best accuracy comprises of kurtosis peak to peak and rms and the accuracy is 99.7 other feature sets also gave us 99.7% accuracies, but in order to have a system that has maximum efficiency of computations, it is mandatory to have least amounts of features. So therefore, we chose to select the feature set comprising of only three features. The statistical parameters or the parameters also show that the percentage accuracy was obtained 99.7%. And here it can be seen that the confusion matrix of the results where the two classes show that 100% of true positive rate and 9% of true positive rate. Now the evolution or evaluation parameters or the statistical parameters of various support vector machine kernels and comparison of support vector machines with KNN shows different results as you can see in this slide. The sensitivity, specificities and accuracies are shown as well. And at the end, there is a comparison of the literatures of the, uh, this study has the highest possible accuracy that was achieved, that is 99.7% for the detection of dilated cardiomyopathy. And all the other literatures show a, an accuracy or results that are lower than this study, which proves that this study is much better than the previously present literature or previously present studies available online or available out there. Now concluding, in conclusion of this study, in conclusion of this study or presentation, I would like to say that this project has great potential. It is serving as a stepping stone towards the detection of dilated cardiomyopathy using pulse plethysmography. It also introduces the use of pulse plethysmography for other cardiovascular diseases detection which is not done before. The project has great clinical applications and can be used in hospitals for easy detection and since it is very lightweighted and very conventional to carry around as well. Technically, the project has an efficiency or an efficient computational time since it uses only three features and the levels of decomposition for the technique discrete wavelet test form is also only five, which proves that this project has an overall greater impact or no, and an overall efficient system as compared to other present or available literatures and then and at the end i would like to thank you all for uh, staying with me listening to this presentation thank you very much allah hafiz